this really tiny um, trailer of my dressing room on the uh, on the film. It was great. It was really tiny, an old little caravan, and it was all decked out. And we used to have the tariff would come in to my trailer. I mean, all of them. You know, there was like 18 of us. You know, crammed into this little trailer with all the instruments. You know, and the smaller cymbal and the stand-up bass and the violins and the whole you know, the whole nine yards. And we'd sit in there, because we were shooting nights, and, and uh, we'd kind of pass around a, you know, a bottle of wine. And just, they'd play for hours and hours, you know. Oh, and their music is, you hear everything. I mean, you hear joy in the, in the purest and most honest sense possible. Uh, uh, sorrow, suffering, uh, you hear everything in their music. And that's what, was always astounding for me, when, you know, when I first met them and, and, and they played literally for me, I mean, just in front of me. I just never experienced anything like that rush of uh, purity, honesty, um, intensity, beauty, um, everything. I always loved Gypsy, gypsy music, for lack of a better term. I mean, um, stuff out of Serbia or, or you know, Bosnia, whatever, whatever, you know, f the former Yugoslavia, you know, the stuff out of Kusturica films or uh, Tony Gatliff's films or um, the stuff that Goran Bregovic was doing. Uh, always loved it, always had a great appreciation for it. But when I met the Tarav, It sort of stepped outside. It, it, it went outside of the music because I fell in love. I mean, I just fell in love with everything they did, you know. I was sitting in the trailer with 15 guys that, you know, only a couple, you can only sort of barely converse with a couple of them. The rest, it's just eyes, man, you know. It's just eyeballs and sort of hand gestures and. And that's how you get by for hours on end. So, you know, that's, uh, no, I fell in love with them. One time when they were playing, they asked if I would come and give them, they were to receive this award, and I, they asked if I would come and present it, you know. So, uh, of course, you know, I came over to give it to them and stuff. And uh, at the time, Vanessa, my girl, was pregnant with, uh, with our son, Jack. We'd already had Lily Rose. Uh, but she was, Vanessa was pregnant with Jack, and I gave him the award, and we sort of had a ball on stage, and then we split, and we went to this little party afterwards for uh, all the uh, musicians. And uh, a couple of them, it was like Caillou, and a couple other guys, they just, I told them, I said, hey, you know, my, we're going to have another kid, you know. And they, they got so... I mean, almost, almost weeping. They were, you know, they got so emotional over. And then they came over to us during the middle of this big sort of shindig. They came over to Vanessa and I as we were about to leave and and uh, sang and played this song of blessing uh, to the belly, you know. You know, so that was the, there watching these amazing human beings kind of bless my child in, in in my girl's belly. That's what's amazing about these guys, you know. They they always give you some kind of experience or memory that will last until, you know, that last light goes out. I mean, in every way. I mean, every experience I've ever had with them is, is just ingrained in my, you know, just seared onto my brain, my heart. They, they just live, and the beauty is they live and live every day to the fullest and just continue to move forward, and, and that's what they know, and that's what we should know. <laughs> uh, he was so beautiful, Nyakshu. So, um, such a confidence, you know. Such an incredible confidence he had. There's a beautiful moment when the woman sitting next to 
in Yorkshire, this a casket. It says, get up, get up, and, and tell him you're a better, better fiddle player than he is, you know? Yeah, I know. Because that's what he would have done. Absolutely. <laughs> he would have absolutely gone and busted Kalyu's balls. Yorkshire is not one to suffer fools gladly. Absolutely yeah. not. No, no, he, he uh, that's a guy who put his flag in, you know, walked in the room and boom, Most I can do is like count to six now or something, you know. But I used to be able to understand when I was working with the tariff, you know. Yeah. I, I used to be able to understand more. I used to tease Kalyu at lunch. I used to go and have lunch with him and tease him that, you know, he was eating this plate of meat and I said, uh, I, we would sort of be half Roman, half Roman, half French. French yeah, invented words. So I would ask him how he was enjoying the, the meat, you know, and he said, oh, it's good, it's good, you know. Shukar, 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 and I said, oh yeah, grast, you know, grast, mm -hmm. which means horse. <laughs> it's it's horse. <laughs> he, he, he was like, no, 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 no. And he would say, uh, brother, like, brother, pral, pral, oh pral, pral. He would say, pral, no, 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 pral, pral. I'm like you know, I can't eat my brother, you know. <laughs> That's really sweet. But just yeah, as a joke, yeah, you know. Yeah. It just sort of came to me more and more that. Uh, how similar the Rome are to the to the American Indian to uh, I mean it's very similar the plight you know and how uh, during the middle of the 19th century how the United States government was you know waging a, a, a cold-blooded and sometimes silent war against the Native Americans you know with you know giving them blankets you know filled with uh, disease uh, kill them off or turning them on to alcohol you know which they which their bodies weren't uh, had no tolerance to and to what was happening with the um, the rum or the gypsies over here in Europe but certainly you know the, the hideous sort of experiments and that were taking place during World War two with you know the Nazis mm -hmm. um, that not a lot of people know about actually Marlon Brando was um, you know, great. You know, he's, he was he was very very involved in uh, you, know, you know civil rights in the '60s and and did a lot of uh, work with the uh, uh, American Indian movement with AIM and Dennis Banks and um, all that in the '70s. He was very angry over the way the Native American had been treated in films, in Hollywood films, and uh, turned down his uh, his Academy Award for The Godfather because of that because he felt that the Indian who had nine times out of ten been played by a white guy in red paint. I remember talking to Kustaritsa um, after he'd done Time at the Gypsies. And he's telling me this story about one of the actors on the film who was a, uh, a gypsy. And they were getting so much money per day, you know, and you know, so they'd get paid and he'd guy'd go and he'd he uh, bought a, this guy went and he bought a, a, a Walkman, you know, and a tape. And he put the thing in, you know, he played the tape and he listened to it for a day, you know. And then when he was finished with the tape, he took it and he chucked it and threw it in the garbage, threw it in the trash can. And Kustritz or somebody was on the set and said, hey, man, you know, you just bought that thing. What are you throwing it away for? He said, well, yeah, but I'm done with it. I listen to it. I don't need it anymore. You know, and that that explains so much to me about about the uh, the cliches that, that that the majority of people f would think about the gypsies. You know, he didn't grab it and or he didn't steal it or he didn't take it and go and hawk it or whatever. He, no, he was done with it and he chucked it and that was it and he kept moving. Beautiful. There's about three or four Americans who understand that there are actually gypsies living among them in the United States, you know, so so it's never been a question over there, I think, you know. They've got plenty of other, uh, there's plenty of other racism and, and there's other people to hate and, and make fun of. People in general, in life, are, are afraid. They're afraid of 
everything they don't understand. Or they're afraid because they've been conditioned to be, to be afraid. I, I think the music could, could very easily um, break through a lot of those layers. Some of the greatest life lessons I learned ever, I, I learned from, from the Taft. Don't get hung up about the things you think are important, you know. Uh, know what's important. And what's important are the simple things. Sometimes the simple things are incredibly complicated, you know, complex like the human body and living and life and breathing and laughing and loving and all that stuff, you know, and just enjoying every second. Um, and I was really blessed when I met them to experience that, to, to learn that from